I thank the gentleman for drawing such laser focus on the issue of Alzheimer's disease and why it is, in fact, the number one most prevalent disease in this country. You know, I brought down this um, Alzheimer's Association sa sash that many of us saw when our constituents came into town um, pleading with us to do more about Alzheimer's research. And many of us took pictures with them and said, yes, we're very supportive, um, but it's really time for us to put our money um, where our mouth is. It's not good enough to wear a purple sash and say you're supportive of Alzheimer's research when, in fact, um, what we are spending in terms of Alzheimer research is so much less than it is with every other disease. And as you're pointing out with your chart, I have a very similar chart as well um, that yours. makes the case we are spending $566 million a year on Alzheimer's research. Good. No question about it, but it's not good enough. And it's not good enough in comparison to what we're spending on cardiovascular disease, on HIV, AIDS, or on cancer. Five billion dollars, 5.5 billion dollars on cancer research. But the real issue is... Excuse me. Yes. May I interrupt you for a second? You certainly may. It appears as though our speaker has something to do. Mr. Speaker, a message from the Senate. Mr. Speaker, I have been directed by the Senate to inform the House that the Senate has passed S-1000, cited as the Chesapeake Bay Accountability and Recovery Act of 2014, in which the concurrence of the House is requested. I thank uh, Mr. Speaker, and I, I thank the gentleman from California. But let's talk about the big elephant in the room. I mean, we already know that we're not spending nearly as much money on Alzheimer's research as we are in other conditions, and we need to pump that up. But let's talk about the elephant in the room. And the elephant in the room is the Republican elephant. It's the elephant on the issue of Alzheimer's. Why is it so important for you and me and every American to be concerned about Alzheimer's research? Because it is going to choke us financially in a very short period of time. We're now spending about 220, let me just get my figures straight here, uh, $214 billion a year on the cost of health care. Now that's $150 billion in costs um, in Medicare and then another $37 billion in costs for Medicaid. So it is costing us a lot of money today, but the real choker is how much it's going to cost us in 2050. And in 2050, it is going to cost us over $1.2 trillion. So we owe it to our families. We owe it to our constituents. We owe it to the American people. We owe it to the Medicare system and the Medicaid system to find a cure or find a way to early detection and then to slow the process of this particular disease. Now, in my county, we have about 15,000 people living with Alzheimer's right now and more than 45,000 caregivers. Nationally, in 2012, 15.5 million caregivers providing an estimated 17 billion hours of unpaid care valued at $220 billion. Which brings me to my next point, and it's about women. This issue is a women's health issue. Now, it's true that women, 60% of Alzheimer and dementia caregivers are women. They are often unpaid in providing those services. Uh, Nationally, a woman in her 60s has an estimated lifetime risk for developing Alzheimer's. It's something like one in six. For breast cancer, where we have been so focused on, it's one in 11. But here's the most stunning figure of all. Two-thirds of the five million seniors with Alzheimer's disease in this country are women. Two-thirds are women. So this is indeed a woman's health issue and one that we have to take very seriously. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I know you have other participants in this, and I will gladly yield back.